Hello, I'm Richard the Dungeon Crawler. Robotech is my favorite animation from the 80s. I watched every episode multiple times. But what would a middle schooler do in 1987 to get his fix of Robotech when there wasn't much available? Today we're going to discuss Palladium's Robotech 2 Sentinels book. And for fun, let's get into our way back machine. The story and legal drama is well known behind Robotech, so let's talk about my personal experiences with the Sentinels book as it came out in 1987. First off, I'm going to discuss my personal experiences with Robotech, so feel free to let me know in the comments if you experienced them the same way and what were your overall thoughts with the series and books. What in Robotech was available prior to 1987? Of course we had the broadcast television, but you had to be at that specific time to watch it. There were also retail tapes that had a few episodes each, but that could be really expensive to collect the entire series. Fortunately, I had a cousin that recorded the entire series off broadcast television with a VHS tape, so those were cherished tapes. For comics, I tried to buy all the Comico comics as they came out. The Del Rey novels were just released, which covered the original series. I also had the first two art books, and it had a great episode guide. For RPGs, the Palladium's Macross and Zentradi Sourcebook were available, also the Southern Cross and the RDF Manual were also released. Fun fact, the Invid Invasion would not be released until 1988. I pretty much bought everything labeled as Robotech, but I desperately wanted to know what happened to Rick and Lisa, or what happened to the Earth after the Invid Invasion. At comic book shops, I heard rumors of a new series called The Sentinels. Then in 1987, Palladium's Robotech 2, The Sentinels book, was released. The front cover surprised me. It had this crazy monster on the cover, but what I was most interested in was a cyclone. Remember, this was before the Invid Invasion book was released, so I had no idea what the stats were like for the cyclone in comparison to the other mecha. Gleefully, I bought the Sentinel book to get a hint of the next series of Robotech. Remember, the Del Rey's Sentinel novels were yet to be released. Also, Eternity's Great Sentinels comic book run has not started yet. Robotech's Art Book 3, which had a rough draft of the episodes, also was not available yet. Lastly, the VHS tapes that had the first three Sentinels episodes was not released yet either. All of these would be released within the next year. Sorry to give everybody this long background, but I just wanted to provide a story that people aren't really talking about today. In 1987, there just really wasn't too much Robotech merch available. Okay, let's get into the books. Southern Cross and the yet-to-be-released Invid Invasion are source books. Macross, book one, is still needed to run these settings. But Sentinels is a complete RPG and not just a source book. It packs a lot of information in its 160 pages. The book reprints key information that's needed to run an adventure, like the steps for character creation or experience for characters leveling up is provided. Since Sentinels is a complete book, many OCCs from the upcoming Invid Invasion are also in this book. REF Veritek pilots, Cyclone riders, REF military specialists are all included in the Sentinels book. If you're interested in any of these OCCs, please check out the links in the description since I discussed these all on prior videos. Remember the Destroids were the non-transformable mecha from the series? In this book, the REF have completely updated every Destroid, and we will go over them in the mecha section. Another really cool OCC is the Micronized Zentradi Warriors. The book states that over 30% of all REF personnel are comprised of Micronized Zentradi Warriors, so it became important to upgrade their mecha. In the Sentinel series, the crew of the SDF-3 journey to the homeworld of the Robotech Masters. They find a group of diverse aliens fighting for freedom against both the Invid and the Robotech Masters. In the Robotech 2 Sentinels book, you can now play as any of these aliens. The first new alien is the Bearmen of Carbana. They are muscular aliens that stand over 7 feet tall. Their planet has low technology, but the Bearmen prefer to use musket-style weapons. Then there are the Amazons of Praxis. They are a race of all female warriors. They prefer to use hand-to-hand -hand weapons. Dr. Lang actually created a flying mecha horse for them, so they make great scouts. The cat people of Garuda have a really cool design, and they were my personal favorite. 
They all have psychic abilities. The most unusual alien is the stone men of Spheris. They are completely crystalline humanoids and can even regenerate body parts. The last aliens are the mystics of Peritin. These are kind of like wizards and can even cast spells. They can cast spells like Call Lightning and Energy Bolt. Reading about the Sentinels for the first time, I remember feeling underwhelmed. You know, there's Amazons and Bearmen that use hand-to-hand -hand weapons against Mecha. That I found that kind of far-fetched. You know, I did like the Mystics, but they're kind of wizards. So that didn't seem super original. But let me know in the comments how you feel about the Sentinels. Was there one you liked? As always, my favorite section was a Mecha section. And what surprised me was the mini-missiles. This was the first time they were used in Robotech. They're small missiles that can give the Cyclone some extra punch. The Sentinels takes place right before the Robotech Masters arrive on Earth, so all the mecha from the series are available. It even provides stats for the Veritech tank. For the first time, the stats from the mecha from the new generation were provided. Now you can see the stats for the Cyclone, Alpha, Beta, and even Vindicator. If you would like to discuss the Invid Invasion setting, please check out the video. Link in the description. One thing I was not expecting were all the new Destroids. In general, they're faster, smaller, and more versatile. But they can still do comparable damage and sometimes even more. I actually liked all of these Destroids better than the original, except one. The OG Excalibur was always impressive to me. It had these two huge weapon arms and gun clusters. It even had external missile pods mounted above the gun arms. The new Excalibur only had one weapon arm, which did the same damage as the original, but the other arm is a humanoid arm, which can use standard RAF rifles. It doesn't have the gun clusters, which looked cool, but really didn't do that much damage. Its missile complement is comparable, but it does have an additional mini-missile launcher. The OG Gladiator has two humanoid arms, which is by far the most flexible of the Destroids. It even has a cool baton. Its secondary weapon is a small laser turret on the head area. It also has a non-impressive gun clusters, but does pack two additional missile launchers. The new Gladiator still has two humanoid arms. Its small head lasers were replaced with two massive lasers. The gun clusters were also replaced. It has now a high damaging rapid fire laser turret. It does have less short range missiles, but to make up for it, it has a new mini missile launcher. I never really cared about the original Raider X. It only had weapon arms, so no missiles or secondary weapons. The new model still has the two weapon arms, but they do much more damage. It does have a secondary laser battery for defense, but it also has a mini missile launcher, so it's much more flexible in combat. Another destroid I really didn't care for was the Spartan. It only has long range missiles, but each arm holds 22 missiles that do a massive amount of damage. But what do you do after all those missiles are used up? The new model holds 20 missiles in each arm, so that is a little bit less. But to make up for it, it has a huge mini missile launcher, which holds 96 plasma mini missiles. Overall, I feel like all of these models are an upgrade to the OG models. Maybe it's because I like the Mac 2 so much, I feel that the Mac 3 is a downgrade. The OG Mac 2 monster has four battleship sized cannons mounted on its shoulders, but the Mac 2 is slow. It can only move 20 miles per hour, but at 74 feet tall, that's not too bad. The new Mac 3 is considerably faster at 45 miles per hour. It only has three main cannons and not four like the OG monster, but each cannon does about half damage as the OG model. What really doesn't make sense to me is the Mac 3's huge bombs. Not missiles, but bombs. The Mac 3 would need to drop a bomb and then rumble away before the blast. I never really got this. Let me know in the comments what you think about the new Destroids. Did you play any of these beasts in battle? If so, did you have a favorite? Thanks everyone, I have a lot more to discuss in the Sentinels like the Zentradi Mecha, the Invid Inorganics, and the cool Titan Mecha Transport. Let me know if you want to see those and I'll do another video. Let me know in the comments if you played the Sentinels and what you thought about it. If not, does it sound interesting? Feel free to give me a like, it would definitely help out the channel. If you want to show support, all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed and you'll be notified when the next adventure is ready. And I'll see everybody on the next Dungeon Crawl.